CataractCoach.com. Cataract surgery in corneal ectasia. The patient has a plastic intrastromal ring segment implanted within the corneal stroma. Now look carefully, and before we even make the incision, that right there is the entrance of a little path that was created with a femtosecond laser to place that intracorneal ring segment. That segment's placed within the stroma of the cornea. Patient had high myopia and had an aggressive amount of LASIK done, and that LASIK caused ectasia. And this eye had ectasia, and the cornea got kind of warped. And so another surgeon implanted this intracorneal ring segment to help bolster or strengthen or support that cornea. Now, it did work, and it stabilized it, but the patient now has a high degree of astigmatism in this eye. And fortunately, it's a regular astigmatism. It's relatively balanced. It looks pretty reasonable. And then the patient here now wants a surgical solution to fix this. So let's put some viscoelastic inside the eye here. And we're going to create our main incision here. Now the most important part when we look at this patient is, well, what is that central 3 or 4 millimeters of the cornea like? Now we're not so concerned if the patient has some issues there out in the 10 millimeter optical zone, but what's in the 3 or 4 millimeter optical zone? That's critically important. Now, fortunately, in that three to four millimeter central optical zone, this patient has a, a basically a high degree of regular astigmatism. And that just tells me we can actually address that with a toric IOL. Now, I know the patient's happy in spectacles, but it's a high degree of spectacle correction. You know, once you get to like three, four, five diopters of coronal astigmatism, that ends up being quite a bit. So let's create a nice caps rectus. See, I'm holding the eye with my left hand through the paracentesis just to keep it beautifully centered. This patient's having a little bit of hard times kind of fixating on my lights, and I want to ensure a beautiful outcome. Now you're saying, why are you going so slowly with the rexus? Well, I want to make it as beautiful as possible. And I'll tell you, well, that's looking pretty beautiful. So there's that five millimeter rexus, looks pretty good. Nucleus is not that dense, so it's very easy to phaco aspirate this thing. Let's just get the nucleus out of the bag, though. If I break this capture bag, I can't put in that high power toric lens, right? So let's do everything possible to be as careful as possible with the highest margin of safety, and let's stay away from the capture bag. Now, faker probes going inside the eye here, chopper on the left hand. You know, a nucleus like this is tilted up. I'd rather just just put just chop it in half and just emulsify this thing. There you go. I try to chop it. It's not even that dense. So relatively soft nucleus. Just take your time. Bring this thing up. Get it out of the capsule bag. Do not break the capsule bag. Remember, you break this bag. How are you going to put the torque lens in? Now you can't. And you need this torque lens because this torque lens is going to help you correct like three or more diopters of corneal astigmatism. So you got to be cautious here. So we're taking our time, aspirating it nice and easy. There we go. Get that whole nucleus out of the eye. And we are done. Let's get that cleaned up. Time for the eye probe. We'll clean up the cortex. We'll get this new torque eye wall in position. Now, how do you do the lens calculations? Well, again, the most important key is the central three to four millimeters of the cornea. And so what's the average power in that three or four millimeter optical zone? Use that as your k-value for the owl power calculations. You don't want to use a really high k-value or the peak k-value because then you'll put in a lower power IOL. So you want to lose, use basically what's on the lower end of that central three millimeter zone. That's the k-power. And so you'll put in a slightly higher IOL power, therefore, with the calculations. And if the patient ends up a little myopic, it's okay. Now, all these lessons are, tra are taught to you on cataractcoach.com, the teaching website. It's so much better than YouTube. It's all right there. It's all for free. If you're a young doctor, do not email me until you've already went to, gone to cataractcoach.com and looked it up. Look up first. Email me later. Now, let's go back to our case here. Like I told you, beautiful looking Rex. Let's get some viscoelastic in the eye. Here's some cohesive agent. Yeah, let's polish up the bag a little bit. So that lens epithelial cells on the undersurface, the anterior capsule rim. We can pause that up pretty easily. There we go. Look at that. Clean all that stuff up as much as you can. You want to be gentle here again. You don't want to break the bag. You have to put this high power torque lens in the bag. It's not a sulcus lens. So we clean that up pretty nicely. That looks that looks pretty, I tell you. 
Looks pretty good. Here comes the lens. Single piece monofocal acrylic lens. High torque power. And we're aiming for a post-op goal of kind of close to planar to minus a half. But remember, we're using the lowest K values in that central corneal 3 or 4 millimeter zone. Therefore, if anything, the patient will end up with a little bit more myopia than we're planned for. That's okay. Myopia is a gift. It is a blessing. Now, here we go. Let's take out the viscoelastic. The amazing part in this surgery was on post-op day one, the patient said, I haven't seen this well in years. And the patient was super happy. So obviously, as you know, one of the best things about being an ophthalmologist, especially one who does cataract surgery, is post-op day one, where the patients tell you, wow, this is incredible. I have not seen this well in a long time. I mean, think about it. Like probably a third of the neurons that send signals into the brain are from the eyes, the vision. It's that important. And so patients really appreciate that. And of course, we love to hear that. So sealing up our incision here, just a little bit of light hydration on the roof there. No need to go mega hydration on the lateral walls. Remember that, people. Get that lens centered up. There's that toric lens at the correct axis. There's no viscoelastic that's retained in the eye. That looks pretty good. Eh, a little bit of viscoelastic. We'll wash that right out. Wash it right out of the eye. If you need to put the eye probe back in the eye, whatever it takes, just clean that up. There we go. Wash that out. More BSS. BSS is your friend here. Now, ah, look at that. Beautiful rexus. That's why I took my time. Now you want to know, why did you spend so much time making a rexus? Because I want it to be that pretty. You can't even tell where it started. Or we're finished, right? There's no like little widow's peak there. Anyway, remember, the Cataract Coach website has so much great material. I promise you'll learn so much. You will love it. And our podcast, the top podcast in all of ophthalmology.